Hello and welcome to another episode of Educational. I'm your host, Roy. I'm Terry. So we are chronicling uh, not only our journey through the aging process, but also our parents. We're lucky to still have, uh, you know, the I have both of my parents. Terry's has one of hers that are still living. And they're getting to that point where they, uh, you know, we're having to make some different decisions. Uh, just... Uh, become more challenging as we go through this. So what we want to do is to, you know, disseminate as much information as we can uh, and then not, not only, you know, talk about our struggles that we go through, but also have professionals on from time to time. And use, typically what we do is we re release our professional uh, interviews on Tuesday and then on Thursdays we have a uh, just more of our personal insights, things like that. But we're also going to start trying to focus more on um, Alzheimer's. And we're not experts. I want to get that out of the way right now. We are not experts, don't claim to be experts. Always seek medical advice. Always read and research the information for yourself to make the best decision for you and your family and your loved ones. Uh, Terry has been through, uh, you know, the, di the Alzheimer's struggles with uh, with her father. And yeah, my dad, he, he, he had Alzheimer's. Well, he had actually d demen dementia, um, Pick's disease. We always referred to it as, as Alzheimer's um, because he was, that's what he, the medication that he took was an Alzheimer's medication. Mm -hmm. So um, to slow the progression and he had it, you know, a, a good, he was out of the house for seven years, but he had it for a good, probably 10, 12 years total um, that we not really wanted to admit, you know, but, yeah. but that we came to, to grips with and tried to, tried to do our best job that we knew how at the time. Yeah. And he passed away about, I mean, this is going on the, he passed away in 2014. So um, almost seven years. Yeah. yeah. And it was, I mean, we've got some <laughs> funny stories about where where he lived and things like that but the medication you know there there's not much out there and they and and uh, there has not been an approved medication for use with alzheimer's in any stage for 18 years yeah so the fact that there was one um just within this last week that was approved for use um what it was a huge feat right, right. there yeah, and I think it. Uh, I think it's fair to say, and I'm not taking any sides, but I think it's only fair to the listeners to say that it, it's approved with an asterisk by it. That's right. So, it's not without controversy. And you know, the other thing I read is that uh, we have six million people in the U.S. that suffer from uh, Alzheimer's, and again, that's not taken in. I guess that's specifically Alzheimer's diagnosis not taken into account you know all the other types of dementias and things They're like related. that but mm -hmm. uh yeah th you know we thought it would be interesting and this is you know we made a decision a couple weeks ago and uh you know we just uh, we've been struggling with uh, technological issues you know <laughs> like wi-fi and things like that so anyway we're going to try to be a little bit more regular about having these Thursday releases where we can talk about anything that's new and going on with us, but also anything new, you know, with that, the, the sh struggle with Alzheimer's, there may be not, not always going to be new information, but just bringing you some kind of information. Some kind of current yeah. happenings. And there's always something current going yeah. on with it because there are so many people and that number is just going to multiply yeah. so much as we get into the future. Yeah. So and it's important to, to, to get, medication yeah you know, oh my gosh it's important to get money for funding research all of that stuff yeah so um this new drug is from biogen and i'm not even gonna try to pronounce it it's okay, like I'm a a do helm a do kanamab atakanamab something like that <laughs> so, <laughs> nobody says it because they don't know how to pronounce right. it but um so the weird thing was and here again i'm i've done a little reading and I think we'll just say most most of the source that we have for this right now has been the NBC News on their website yeah. and then on and CNN. CNN as well. So, you know, what we always advise is go on there, check it out, 
Micah and the said. FDA. I, I did pull it up on FDA oh, okay. site also. Yeah, we're not the experts, and we don't no. don't ever uh, want to be, but mainly we just want to give you something to the listeners, something to think about, something to investigate. It may or may not be a good fit. Uh, you know, for each individual situation, but it's it's definitely may be worth the conversation with your healthcare professional or your loved one's healthcare professional. Yeah, but, uh, and the and the you know when this first came out, I was so excited. I was just like, oh my gosh, they've actually approved something yeah. for use. Well, everybody was just across the board so excited about it because it had been almost twenty years. Well, in the last you know for about. Th- two or three days that kind of stewed and then all this other stuff came out up about possibly you know controversy regarding um the use and it's it you know it's a it's the first disease modifying therapy approved for use in the u.s but it's for early stage alzheimer's and um it treats the underlying disease rather than manage the symptoms yeah. like anxiety and yeah, the one thing I've read is that it, it does not claim to reverse no. Alzheimer's, but it does uh, slow the decline, which, you know, if, if you have someone suffering, then, of course, that's good news. You know, some news yeah. is better than good news. Enough. Some news is better than no news, and if it helps a little bit, you know, we would love something that would reverse it and make everybody back to where they were prior to that. But uh, if we don't have that, maybe taking that, the position of slowing it and at least extending that time, you know, that that's a win for some people. But I think that's where the, it seems from the little research that I've done on this, that's kind of what it, the, the medical professionals, and if I'm not wrong, correct me, you know, as we go through this, the, there was an independent panel back in November of 2020 that actually declined to push this forward and wanted more research and more information once they once the fda advisory yeah yeah, an advisory advisory panel Mm -hmm. and then the fda kind of overrid that and pushed it out and then i I was reading that one of the doctors that was on that original panel has actually resigned because it was about well 11 member panel 11 member panel and 10 of those 11 members did not approve it for use because yeah. there were, uh, you know, different reasons. And then one of the 11 was uncertain. Yes. So none of them approved it yeah. at all. Yeah. And that's kind of the scary because the drug came out on what they call an accelerated approval pathway, yeah. which I think has opened up a lot, you know, due to COVID and the vaccine and pushing things through. I think the FDA is taking a hard look at, you know, streamlining that, but Again, it seemed like this was a lot of pressure from the public, from Alzheimer's groups associations. and things like yeah. that, because they're saying, hey, look, kind of like you said in the intro is like, hey, we haven't had anything in 18 years. If there's even a hint that this works, get it out and let's trial it with real people, because that was another thing that, uh, you know, the, the, the way that they were trialing it, it, I don't think there was an issue with it, but, you know, the limited number of people I think these groups saw if we get it out to the masses, we'll let them test this and see, which um, that is one of the, I guess, one of the asterisk points of this approval process was that it was approved, but they told them that they had to continue doing their studies to, you know, make sure right. what they were getting out and, of it. And what the advisory committee, the the, the 11-member committee um didn't approve was the original study as it was designed. Um, and you know, there are some possible side effects like brain bleeds and, you know, just even, but, but if you think about it, even if they had possible side effects, I mean, my gosh, people have Alzheimer's. So what's gonna weigh it out, you know, is it, yeah. okay, are you worried about the side effects from this, the possible side effects from this new drug or right. the possibilities of this new drug being able to be helpful? Right. You know, I mean, they have Alzheimer's. That's not a, you know, that, that right there is, is the rest, yeah. that's the rest of their life. You don't know how long that's going to be and you don't know what kind of other, you know, on top of whatever health issues come along with that because there are so many, you know? 
Yeah, and I think it's important that individuals make the decision an informed decision. And that I think that's kind of where we're going with this, it seems, is that, uh, you know, the groups are saying, yeah, it, I mean, as long as there's not a lot of uh, a large percentage of people that suffered the side effects, they're saying, well, let's put it in the people's hands and let's let them make a decision. You've got, you know, a terrible disease. Do you want to take a chance that this could go right for you or, you know, are you willing to roll the dice and say, well, if I get the side effect, I'm not going to be much worse off. It may make it happen sooner, but I'm probably not going to be much worse off than I, if I would have struggled with the Alzheimer's, you know, through the end stages. So the, and the, uh, you know, so that's kind of giving it back to self choice is letting people families decide for themselves is it worth it for us in our situation and of course consulting their health health care professionals amongst that but then also um the price i mean definitely gonna be priced out and i haven't heard yet if you know if this is going to be covered by insurances or if it's going to be if it's still going to be considered experimental so people will have to pay cash out of their uh out of their pocket, own pocket. Yeah. which uh, some data that I saw, you know, and all this is very preliminary. You know, we are taping this June 12th of uh, 2021. 2021. All the years are running together now. So, yeah, but just, the uh, you know, things change rapidly. And, right. you know, if you listen to this in G- the end of June or July or August, maybe it's different. But for today, they're saying that this will cost $56,000 a year. Yeah. I mean, that that's a lot of money. That's about... Uh, what just under five grand uh, a month then uh, no it is and then it said that what you have to do is you have to, it's got, uh, delivered through infusion you have to go in every four weeks right. get an infusion and it's based on your weight and then your cognitive impairment so I guess you know if you're heavier in weight and have a, a, a and you're further along with more cognitive impairment, maybe it's going to cost more. And they give you a little more, where if you're at the beginnings, uh, then maybe not so much. And I think that you made that point, too, is that this is originally, I guess, designed for people that are very early Early, on. Early stages. Yeah, and um, I'm sorry, I was going to go back because I didn't... Because the... the, um, doctor who was on that committee who resigned the you know advisory committee who yeah. resigned he's not the only one who resigned there were actually three total members oh, okay. who who did and um you know they he's he cited one of the reasons because of the great public pressure to get a drug out i don't know it's just such a it's that and then and then also that it may delay delay the the development for new drugs for alzheimer's because they're putting everything into this i i don't know yeah. I, I don't know what well i mean it's diminished I, momentum for it's, other ones it's pretty I, telling that a 10 of 11 said no and one guy was like yeah i don't know and then you know for three two doctors to actually resign over it, i mean it's that that's pretty telling in itself um there was another analysis done and i'm not sure of the group that did it or how they went through the uh coming up with these figures but what they did is they tried to look at based on the gains from taking the drug that were suggested by the company studies that this should only be priced between twenty five hundred and eight thousand dollars a year, which is drastically reduced. Th- yeah, substantially lower than the fifty six thousand. So it, you know, if if um, I guess what they're saying, you know, it's kind of like a cost benefit analysis. If you were to do this, what is the real benefit to you? And so that's another thing to maybe look at um, is the huge difference in in just that. Is it really worth taking a chance well number one is it worth spending the money for it and is it worth taking a chance with the side effects for obviously the minimal gains 
Yeah. But that's us. That's an outsider speaking. If it's your loved one, then you're looking for you're a minimal do, gain. Yeah, you, you're you going to do anything, anything, you can, and at any cost. Grasping. Right. Yeah, and uh, I was just going to. I wanted to read the FDA's response when that came out. Yeah. When the drug came out, it just said currently, currently available therapies only treat symptoms of the disease. The, this treatment option um, is the first therapy to target and affect the underlying disease process of Alzheimer's. As we've learned from the fight against cancer, the accelerated pr approval pathway can bring therapies to patients faster while spurring more research and innovation. Yeah. So, you know, everybody, it's just so confusing. But I know as uh, the daughter of a, a, an Alzheimer's patient, I, I would be grasping at every straw that I could right. and doing everything that I possibly could just to give them a chance. Yeah. Just any chance. Yeah. But then the, uh, I think the other drawback to this is, is it, you know, using it appropriately. If let's just say somebody uses it in the later stages and it doesn't work as well, you know, are we going to give this a bad name versus if it's used appropriately in the early stages and does delay, you know, so I think that's a, another thing about um, opening up widely is and also really listening to the statistics that come out because we can, uh, you know, the, we just don't want it to come out and say, well, it's just not working in a large percentage. But if that percentage is people that it's really not targeted to help then, you know, we wouldn't expect that. So I think, you know, as you do your research, be, just be careful to look at all the different facts. Yeah, and the, uh, so Dr. Joel Paramuter, I'm not sure if I'm saying his name, Paramuter, Perimeter, per, per, uh, anyway, he was the one who was, uh, who quit and came out and made, made a bunch of statements. But one of the um, statement, statements that he made, he said, he said that the original study as designed was fa was or it failed completely so what the um, accelerated approval pathway for the uh, the FDA accelerated approval pathway did was retroactively choose a subgroup that got better so those were typically very biased and that that is quoting him yeah um so you know it's back and forth um Yep. I, I, I'm just very conflict. I'm conflicted, right, but really right. anything, anything, anything. It's just such a devastating. Yeah. And when these new things roll out, there's, you can probably usually always make a case for, you know, one side or the other. But I think the main thing is it, you know, uh, information is power. And so when you walk into a doctor's visit the next time, at least you have this information to say, Hey, is it good for us, you know, if we were to do it, what is the outcome? What is the... What are the side effects? You know, what is the stage that, you know, you are in or your loved one is in? And, you know, try to make some educated and, and get some healthcare professionals. The problem is, too, with that is a lot of your, you know, local practitioners may not really be in the loop since this is, is coming out new. So it may take you know, looking a little bit deeper into some of the original studies. And that, uh, I was trying to think where that was, uh, not sure where it was released, but I think you can find it on the FDA website, well, yeah. correct? Yes, okay. definitely. And then, um, yeah, and we looked at CN CNN and um, yeah. the C CBS and, M and NBC, yeah. all, of, all of them, ABC, yeah. well, they all had. It's such huge news. You know, yeah. because like you said, it's been 21 years. This treats the some of the underlying uh, issues of the disease, not just their symptoms. So, right. you know, there's just a lot of hope that's been uh, put around this. We just need to, you know, move cautiously until it's proven, you know, one way or the other. So all we, all we recommend is just do your research, do your homework. Maybe don't even take one person's word for it. You know, get this is a, would be a great time to get a second opinion as oh, well. Third, fourth, fifth, especially with that. But yeah. keeping in mind that desperation, you know, brings decisions that yeah. you may not make yeah. if you ha even had the information. But try right. to get as much information as you can right. before. All right. Well, unless you have anything else, we'll wrap it up for this episode. 
nope, just, I mean, it, it, it's exciting, exciting news to know that we're close, but just make sure that you do your research. Yeah. Proceed with caution. Yeah. All right. Well, that's going to do it for another episode of Educational. We appreciate you listeners very much. Um, if, uh, you know, we also have the Facebook group, you can interact. We're on Instagram. We're on all the major social media platforms. Uh, we have a lot of great guests. If you haven't listened to us before, you know, go over to our website, www.ageucational.com, and you can see all of our previous guests and episodes that we've released. Uh, some really great ones out there, some awesome ones to uh, come up in the future as well that we've got on the calendar. So give a listen, and we're always open for feedback. If there's a topic that you'd like for us yes. to cover or an expert you'd like for us to get on, if you've got a family member that's been through this, we also like to hear, uh, you know, individual stories if people want to share. And then, um, you know, if you have a practitioner that has to do with aging in some manner, if you want to recommend them, we'd be glad to talk about that. So reach out, let us know. And um, we are on all the major podcast platforms too, Apple, Google, Stitcher, Spotify. If we're not on one that you listen to, please reach out. We'd love to... Uh, you know, get it on so it make it easy for you to listen to. Until next time, that's going to do it for me. I'm Roy. And I'm Terry. Y'all have a good day. Take care of yourselves Bye -bye. and take care of each other. Take care of your loved ones. <laughs>